pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we come before your word this morning, Lord, I just pray that your love will just fill this place. I pray, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit to just move in hearts and move in lives so that we will feel the depth of the love that you have for us this morning, Lord. I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just wash over each person and that we will come to understand the reality of the love that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have been talking about... Um, the Advent season, or we've been in the Advent season, I guess I should say. And throughout this Advent season, uh, we've kind of landed on different words. So we talked about faith, and we talked about hope, and we talked about joy. And this week, we're landing on the idea of love. We're landing on the idea of love. And it is just really my prayer for you this morning that you will just feel God's love for you, and that you will feel the depth of the love that God has for you. Because we're going to look at God's love today, and we're going to see that this is a love that is beyond our imaginations. This is a love, God has a love for us that we, we cannot even fathom the depths of his love. And so that's what we're going to kind of be looking at today <clears throat> as, we, as we get into our text. We're going to look at this idea that God is love, and love comes from God, and that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus into this world to die for our sins so that we can love others. That's the love that God has for us today. When I think about this idea of love, the very first verse that kind of comes into my mind is John 3.16. And later in our service, we're going to have the kids come and sing for you. Um, and when I think about John 3.16, it's probably one of the first verses that maybe you learned. Maybe you don't know it, but maybe you do. But it's one of the first verses that we teach kids in our children's ministry. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And when we think about the depths of the reality of that love that God has for us, it changes our hearts. It changes our lives. It completely changes us because no one encounters King Jesus and goes home unchanged. When we have a true encounter with Jesus, it changes us from the inside out. And that's the love that we're going to look at today. Our text for today is actually going to be in, in 1 John 4. But when we look at this idea, for God so loved the world, and in 1 John 4 it says God is love. And we're going to start with this idea that God is love. God is love. God shows us love, but he is love. He is love. It is at the core of his being. It is who he is is. God is love. Think about that for a while. Because when we think about that and we, we realize the truth that God is love, it changes our perspective. Sometimes we think, um, we struggle with things and we think, if God is love, why do bad things happen? If God is love, why is this circumstance here in my life? If God is love, how come things haven't turned out the way I expected? If God is love, why didn't it happen? Why am I in this place? And when we start to ask those questions and we start to doubt, because we have, we have two responses when we ask those questions. We can, either, we can either doubt and we can think, if God is love, or we can look at the truth of what the Bible says. And we can claim those promises over our lives. And the Bible says that God is love. God is love. He loves us. He loves us with a love that is so deep and so wide for us that we can't even fathom it. God loves us that much. So when we think about those questions, we have to realize that sometimes bad things just happen. Sometimes they're a result of our sin. Sometimes they're a result of the sin of, of others. But sometimes we just don't know why. Sometimes those things, they just happen. 
But when that happens, we have to claim the truth of the reality that God is love and God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 28 says, For all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Because God is love, he looks at us and he looks at us and he sees, he sees all the hurt and the brokenness in our lives and he says, I can use that. I can use that and I can restore that for my honor and for my glory. When we open our hearts and we let him in. Not a tear that you've cried, not a burden that you've carried goes unnoticed. Nothing goes unnoticed. God knows. He knows. And he meets us in that place and he loves us. He loves us before we even loved him. He loves us. When we come to realize the reality of that love, it changes us. It transforms our lives. The rest of John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves us so much. How do we know God loves us? He sent his Son. He sent Jesus to the earth. And sometimes I think at Christmas, when we look at, we look at the Christmas story and we think, oh, baby Jesus in the manger with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds come and the wise men come and it's Christmas time, it's a story we've probably heard over and over and over and isn't that nice. But how does that baby that was born over 2,000 years ago affect my life today? How is Jesus being born over 2,000 years ago, how does that help me today? What about this situation that I'm in? What about this place where I'm at? But when we realize that God is love and that God sent his son, his one and only son, Jesus, who was fully God and became fully man to come to this earth, to come down to rescue us from our sin and our darkness, we will not go unchanged. He changes our lives. He comes down. He, he sent his son down into this world, into our brokenness, because our sin separated us from, from him. And he says, I will not leave you there. I will not leave you in your sin. I will not leave you in brokenness. Do you know what I'll do? I'm not going to, I'm going to give you the greatest gift ever. I'm going to give you my son. And so he gives us Jesus, and Jesus comes down, and he's fully man, and he's fully God, and he comes down knowing full well what it's going to be like. Isaiah 53 is a prophecy in the Old Testament that tells us that he would be despised and rejected. He would be a man of great sorrow. He would be, he would be crushed. He would, be, he would go to the cross. He came knowing full well what he was coming into. And he chose to come anyway. He chose to come because he loves you. He loves you. His love for us is so great. So at Christmas, when we think about the manger, we think about Jesus, we think about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men, what do we think about? How did that baby that was born over 2,000 years ago affect my life today? It affects our life today because it restores our relationship with God. God himself came down to rescue us. When we were in a place of brokenness, he came down himself to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. The work that Jesus did on the cross, he bore the penalty for our sins on the cross. We're going to jump into our text. Our text for today is actually 1 John 4. And when we look at that, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to read, I think I'm going to read 1 John 4, um, 7 through 21. And I'm going to come back to this idea that Jesus is love come down for us. But I want to read this full text 
because um, John wrote this text, and he wrote this text to believers. He wrote this text to um, people who had put their faith in Jesus already. But there is a message here for you because I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior or if you're searching or um, if, you're, if you're just needing a fresh touch from God today. I don't know where you're at. But there's a message for you here today. So we're going to read the text because um, in this, John kind of circles around a lot, and I don't want you to get lost in it. So we're going to read the whole thing, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to kind of take a look at some of these ideas, okay? So uh, if you have your Bible with me, I'm in 1 John 4, starting with verse 7. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life with him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, how we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. God is love. So as we go back and we kind of unpack this text, the first two verses we see God is love. And as we move into the next part, in verses 9 and 10, we see right there, just like John 3, 16 showed us, that God loved us so much. How do we know God loved us? Because he sent his son. He sent Jesus to come down to earth to to atone for our sin. Some translations right there where it says he sent his son as a sacrifice use the word propitiation. Okay, it's a big theological word, but I want to tell you about it because it explains this text a little bit more. Okay? That means that Jesus, the work that Jesus did on the cross, Jesus bore the wrath of God, wrath that was due towards us as sinners because our sin separates us from God. And that wrath was due towards us as sinners. And the work that Jesus did on the cross, he bore the wrath of God so that God's wrath would be turned towards favor towards us. God's wrath would be turned to favor towards us. Think about that. If you are in Christ, God's favor is upon you. If you are in Christ, he has poured out his love and his grace and his mercy to you through the work that he did on the cross. If you don't know Christ, that invitation is there today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior realizing the work that he did on the cross to bring you back into relationship with him, to restore that relationship with him. What greater act of love could there be? My son this week, he plays football with some boys at recess. And... For a while, he had been coming home. Mom, they won't throw me the ball. They won't throw me the ball. I keep playing at recess, and they won't throw me the ball. So finally, we're like, you know what? Let's pray about it. So we prayed about it. Do you know what we asked? We asked God if he would let the boys or have the boys throw him the ball. That's what we prayed. God, just let these boys throw him the ball. 
send him off to school. Honestly, I didn't really give much more thought to it. He comes home at the end of the day. He's jumping in the car. Mom, guess what? I said, what? At recess today, guess what happened? I said, oh, what happened? The boys threw me the ball. I said, Nathan, that's great. That is so exciting. Oh, but mom, you have to listen to this. They threw me the ball, but they, they tried to throw it to somebody else first, and then they tried to throw it to somebody else, and they all got blocked. So I was the only one open. They threw me the ball. Somebody else came and tipped it. So I put my hands inside my coat. I reach up. I close my eyes, and I wasn't even sure if I grabbed it. And then I looked up, and I had the ball, and I went in, and I made the winning touchdown, and they made me captain of the team. And I was like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> he's like, yeah, it was awesome. And he's grinning from ear to ear. And, and it, was, it was just exciting. It was like, wow. But friends, that is the favor of God. That is the favor of God. When we realize what Jesus did for us on the cross, when we realize the extent of the love that God has for us, that he is love and he sent Jesus to show us his love and his love came down to rescue us, and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive his favor. He could have left us just catching the ball. We would have been perfectly happy. But he did so much more than that. We reach up. We catch the ball with our eyes closed. We go in for the running touchdown, and he makes us captain of the team. When we ask for this, God gives us this. He gives us eternal life with him if we are in Christ. If we are in Christ, we have eternal life with him. What more could we ask for? It makes all the hills and the valleys and the trials and the tough stuff that we go through here on earth, and we go through tough stuff. I'm not trying to minimize that. But when we put our eyes on Jesus and we claim that truth, and we know who we are in him, it's all we need. It's all we need is Jesus. It's all we need. When we realize that, God does a work in our hearts. He does a work in our hearts. He gives us a new heart. Ezekiel 36 says, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and I will give you a new heart, a tender, responsive heart heart. He gives us a new heart. And do you know what flows out of that new heart? A love for others. God is love. Love comes from God. God shows us his love by sending Jesus. He changes our hearts and his love flows from us. Now, as we look at our text, we're going to go back to um, verses 11 and 12. But before I do that, I want, I want you to kind of realize what this love is. Because in the English language, we have one word for love. I love ice cream. I love my husband. I love my kids. I, I love to run. Okay? I have a lot of things that I love, but I don't love them in the same way. If you go back to the Greek and you look in the Greek at what this word love means, this word is the agape or agapeo, form of love. Agape love is selfless. It's sacrificial. It says, I will put your needs above my own. It's giving. It's intentional. It's active. It's actively putting the needs of others before the needs of self. And friends, I tell you today that this is the love we're called to give, but this is the love that God is. This is the love that God is at the core of his being. This is who he is. And so when we doubt and we question, we have to go back to that truth that this is who God is. God is love. He is selfless. He is sacrificial. He pours out his favor and his, his mercy and his grace in our lives. He pours it out in our lives. Because God is love. And we're going to read this passage, and we're going to see that this is the kind of love that is to flow from us. 
verse 11. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Love is the mark of the Christian life, a love for God and a love for others. That's not always easy, is it? Have you heard the expression when something goes wrong, oh, brother, something goes wrong, what do we say, oh, brother? It's not always easy. Where does that expression come from? But this is the kind of love that God calls us to have. God is love, and he calls us to have this agape love, this giving, this, this selfless love, this sacrificial love for others. That's how he calls us to love other people. We can't produce it on our own. We can't fake it. It's a love that comes from God. That's how we're called to love others. How do we do that? How do we love others with that kind of a love? I know I can't do it on my own. There's no way. There have been situations where I'm just like, God, I do not feel an ounce of love for that person, but I'm going to choose to love them. I'm going to choose to love them. I don't feel like it. I'd rather be crabby and just kind of do my own thing, but I'm going to choose to love that person. How does that happen in our hearts? How does that happen when we come to that place where we can truly love others with that agape form of love? We can truly pour out into the lives of others with that agape form of love. How does that happen? It's the Spirit's work within us. Verse 13 says, And God has given us his Spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. Friends, if you are in Christ, you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. Isn't that good news? He sends Jesus. He sends Jesus to atone for our sins. And not only that, he doesn't leave us there. Jesus goes to the cross. He does the work on our cross. And then he sends the Spirit to come and live and dwell in our hearts. His favor is poured out upon us. The Spirit leads, guides, purifies produces this fruit in our life, produces the ability to love others with a love beyond ourselves. And there is joy and there is blessing in that because when you are in a tough place and you are just like, ah, I'm supposed to be feeling this love. It's Christmas. We're supposed to be spreading Christmas cheer. We have family get-togethers and people are agitated and irritated and we're supposed to be putting on a smile and everything's supposed to be great. How do we love? Love comes from God. The Spirit produces in us the love that we need to love others with a love that is beyond ourselves. Here's another exciting thing. We can grow in love. Verse 17 says, And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. I don't know about you, but I do not love perfectly. I try, but I don't. But we can grow in love. God continually challenges us to love beyond our natural abilities. He continually challenges us. He continually puts us in situations or puts people in our path or or gives us things that come up that we're just like, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own. How am I going to do this? How are you going to do this? How am I going to do this? With God. With a love that comes from God. How do we find that love? We remain in him. We remain in him. He is the source of love. Jesus says, no one comes to the the Father except through me. Plug into Jesus. We keep our eyes on Jesus. 
the source of love. Verses 17 and 18. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Perfect love expels all fear. If we are in Christ, we are in his perfect love love. Perfect love expels all fear. If we are not in Christ, the day of judgment is one of the biggest things that we should fear. Because on that day, all will be judged. All will be judged and and have to give an account for their lives here on earth. And if we are not in Christ, that's a scary day. But if we are in Christ, it's a day to rejoice. There is no fear in that day if we are in Christ. Because God says, I love you. I sent my son to atone for your sin. He took the wrath. It's been turned to favor. My favor is upon you. When I look at you, I look at you with favor. I look at you through the righteousness of Christ. There is no fear in that. There is no fear in perfect love. Verse 19, we love each other because he first, because he loved us first. We love each other because he loved us first. Stop and think about that. Really stop and think about that. God loved us first. God loved us when we were still in our brokenness and we were still in our sin. God loved us. We were rebellious and angry or indifferent toward God, and God loves us. He loved us in that place. He loved us first. He loves us in a way that is unmerited and undeserved. And he looks at us and he says, I am not going to leave you in that place. I am going to be relentless and I am going to pursue you. I am going to find you in that place when we don't even, we don't even maybe even have an awareness that he's there, he's there. And what we find as we look back over our lives is that God is leading and directing and putting people in our paths. And when we look back over our lives, we can kind of see how all of this has been happening, even though at the time we didn't even realize it was happening, that God was moving and working in in our lives in this way. Because he first loved us. He loves you. He loves you. The Father loves you. His love for you is so deep and so wide, so great. We can't even fathom it. He loves you. And so we're called to love others. What happens when that's tough? What happens when someone has hurt us or offended us or it'd be easier to just write them off? I don't need that in my life. What happens? What does God say? Verse 20 and 21, if someone says I love God but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. How are we called to love? We're called to love with an agape love. An agape love that is selfless, sacrificial, and says, you know what? I'm going to love you even if you don't love me back. Because that's the kind of love that God has for each one of you. That's his perfect love. How do we have that kind of love in our life? How do we love others with that kind of love? We plug into Jesus. Who do you see Jesus to be today? Is it some story of a baby in a manger? not really knowing how that affects my life today, 
Or do you see Jesus for the reality of who he is? Do you see Jesus as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, as the great I am? Do you see Jesus as love come down? Come down to rescue you from your sin and your darkness and your brokenness. Do you see Jesus today? How do we respond? How do we respond to that kind of love that God has given? We respond with his love. We remain in him and we respond with his love to others. The fruit is love. 1 Corinthians 13 says, and these three will remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love. So as we kind of wrap up, I just ask you to um, just let the Holy Spirit move. Let the Holy Spirit move. Is there someone that he's calling you to love? Maybe he's wanting you to realize the depths of his love for you today. Maybe you've never said, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. I want you in my life. I want you to be my everything. We're going to close with a prayer, and then we have a video. And as we're showing the video, the kids are going to come up and sing. And they have a special song that they've been working on for you. Um, and so it's just kind of an invitation to receive love from them. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you. I just thank you, Lord, that you are love. It is who you are at the core, at the depth of your being. You are love. Father, I just thank you that you sent Jesus to this world to, to, to deal with our sin. You didn't leave us. You relentlessly pursued us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for rescuing us right where we were at. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for giving us love so that we can love others. Help us to love with that agape form of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That was great. Well, as we think about love, what better way than the love expressed through a child, right? It was great. So, will you stand and receive this blessing? As you go about throughout your week, it's Christmas. What a perfect time to not get caught up in the busyness of the season, but to really think about Jesus and to really think about the real meaning of the season. So go with this blessing. Go knowing the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.